I'm Niall Gagan, a licensed clinical psychologist in Berkeley, California. My collaborator on this project is Simon Dorsonia, a therapist in Melbourne, Australia. You're about to watch a live demonstration session of coherence therapy. If you're not already familiar with coherence therapy, check out our introductory videos on YouTube. You'll find a link to those at the end of this video. The client in the session you're about to watch was a volunteer from a workshop audience. The only difference between this and any other coherence therapy session is that we asked her to have a specific target of change in mind before getting started. At the end of the demo, you'll see a remarkable follow-up interview that Simon did with her two months later to assess what lasting effects, if any, the session had had for her. That should be enough of an introduction. Here's the demo session and follow-up interview. So tell me, what change would you like today's session to bring about? Um, get incredibly anxious in groups. Ah, uh -huh. incredibly anxious in groups. Mm -hmm. Okay. When I'm speaking about myself. So give me a little bit more of a sense of what kinds of groups and what kind of... Yeah, so when, when do you find yourself talking about yourself in groups? So it's not just even talking about myself, although that's... Um, find that it. difficult, um, but also if I have to perform in, a, in usually in a group of my peers. So if I'm teaching, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. um, but if I'm having to um, talk about uh, work-related things in a staff meeting, for example, or, mm -hmm. um, then I get um, anxious and tongue-tied. Mm -hmm. So to start out, maybe you can give me a sense of this meeting, uh, what, how many people are we talking okay, about? What so kind of space? So the, um, it would be a group of 25, 30 staff, uh -huh. all seated in a circle. Uh -huh. yeah. and, uh, mm -hmm. and tell me this, uh, what's the first moment where the anxiety starts to arise? Is it just as you're about to talk, or is it as you're sitting in the room, or is it the night before, when does the anxiety first start to, when does it first start to enter your experience? It probably just bubbles away just before the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so I find myself talking really fast so that I can get through it as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I, I find myself doing in other settings as well. Uh -huh. So of course all that's really uncomfortable. And Embarrassing, or that be the right Yeah, I word? feel exposed. Exposed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, I can hear that. So, of course, you'd like to be having a different experience mm -hmm. than that, right? Okay. So let's see. Here's what I'm picturing, and I'd like you to uh, imagine this with me. So you're sitting there in the circle, but to your surprise you notice yourself having a different experience where you're really just feeling yourself just sitting there present in your body. You're just sitting there, oddly calm and relaxed, oddly for you, unusually for you, right? Calm, relaxed, feeling your body. And you start speaking from that place. I'm wondering, what are you noticing? What's coming up in you? as you hear me describe that. What's your actual internal response or internal experience? I feel like they'll either talk over the top of me uh, or they'll say, hurry up, you know, like... Uh, they're impatient? Impatient. Um, not because they want what I've got particularly, um, but because they want to get on and talk about what's interesting to them. To them? Yeah, and uh -huh. that I haven't got anything valued. I haven't got anything of value. Uh huh. The word that's coming to my mind, and I'm wondering if it fits for you, it's almost as if I'm a nuisance to them, or I'm. Oh, that's an interesting word. Is that, uh, what no, that no, but that's an interesting word. What's interesting about that? Oh, I, that I, I, I've always had this thing, I felt like a nuisance to my mother. Aha, uh -huh. <laughs> I see, I see. Uh huh. Nuisance, this feeling of being a nuisance, this is not, this is a familiar feeling. It's something very familiar. Yeah, about it's feeling. kind of.
What's happening in you? What happens when you're right there? What's the feeling? Just enormous relief. Enormous relief. Say more. What's the relief? What indicates that things have truly shifted or transformed for you? Since then, we've had a, another staff meeting and I had to present something at the staff meeting and I didn't have any, I didn't even remember. <laughs> I just got up and did my presentation and felt quite confident about it. Um, but I didn't, I wasn't nervous. I was much calmer and like I said, I didn't even remember it until after the meeting was over. <laughs> Which was quite amazing. How would you describe the demonstration session to someone who wasn't there? I would say that Niall took me through a very kind of gentle process by which I started very quickly to get into the sense um, that I had that I have in those difficult situations in meetings, um, but also in my family, um, relating to my family of where I firmly believe, believed something. Uh, and that was that, um, you know, if I took up too much space, that others would be resentful of me. And it, it really did feel very, very much like that. Um, and then I had a kind of a, a, um, a very different kind of experience. And that was that when I, when Niall asked me to turn around and look at those other people, then, um, it was very different from what from the idea that I had in my head about that. So what's your abiding impression of the demonstration session? It was fairly astounding to me just how quickly and deeply I got into that sense of that truth that I had at the beginning of the session with Niall. It was it was really, really powerful. And some of the questions that he asked, some of the things that he asked me to imagine were really incredibly effective at getting me there. It was almost like a redemptive experience for me.